On this episode of Canada's Worst Driver, our students make these sounds. <laughs> oh. Buckle up your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy ride. The eight worst drivers in Canada can't stop hitting things. It's almost pathological. Oh. To graduate and get out of the driver rehabilitation center, our pupils are going to have to do a whole lot better than this. Bad driving is a Canadian problem. We're here to deal with it. In this country, the authorities discourage bad driving by making it expensive. More traffic tickets, higher fines and crazy insurance rates are just not helping. We need rehabilitation, which is why we created this educational center. Here, we offer salvation and training for the worst drivers in the country. And we mean the worst. Chris was nominated as Canada's worst driver by his wife, Michelle. David was nominated by his buddy, George. Madalena was singled out by her best friend, Jennifer. And Manuel's nominator was his work colleague, Alex. Heather's next. Husband Ernie put her name forward. Faith Ann was nominated by four people, including Joanne. Which brings us to Bob, who's been branded a bad driver by his friend, Rob. And finally, we have Tatiana, nominated by mother-in-law, Beth. Me? I'm an average driver. But next to Canada's worst, I'm absolutely outstanding. Put it in reverse here. Ooh. To prove that these challenges can be done easily, I'll be doing them first. Every episode, we give our students three different challenges. The student who improves the most will graduate and leave. The rest must stay. After eight shows, the last pupil remaining will be Canada's worst driver. The eight students we accepted were all nominated by you. And each one is breathtakingly ignorant behind the wheel. These people crash, they dent, they scratch, and worse, they have no idea what they did wrong. When Canada's worst drivers make sudden moves on the road, braking constantly and swerving erratically, they often don't even realize they're driving badly. We think they should know. Which is why we've rigged up this. This car has a tank on its roof. The tank will be this full of water and has these beautiful toilet pipes coming out that ultimately funnel right onto the driver and the nominator's heads. If the driver moves the car fluidly, they'll be able to get out dry. However, if they get the water in this tank sloshing, this is going to be a lesson that will soak through even the thickest skull. To show the course can be driven without getting too wet, I'm gonna do it first. The key to driving this course successfully is gonna be going smooth and even. It's going to, whoa! big pop-up comes out so we just wait for him to go away and turn around here in between the mess of cars okay we've got our slow driver in front of us now <laughs> course turns into a u-turn right here don't want to get the water sloshing too much oh look at it bounce up there yeah yeah we got a road rager behind us whoa and a big tire coming out in front there's a few people I can see just driving through this stuff knocking it everywhere and that should just about do it. A head screaming through the finish line, and I'm done. What's my time? Five minutes and 10 seconds. Five minutes and 10 seconds. And I'm not that wet. Now let's see how the worst drivers in Canada make out. Watching every move the drivers make is our crack team of experts. Dr. Uzma Raymond is a behavioral psychologist. You're not taking responsibility. Scott Marshall instructs driving instructors. Either it is or it isn't. There's no maybe. Jim Kenzie is a syndicated auto journalist. You've been driving basically like a lunatic for most of your life. And Kelly Williams is a race car driver. You just scrape your car through there. I couldn't believe that. First behind the wheel today is our Bulgarian-born slowpoke, Tatiana. What scares me the most on the road is when the roads are wet when there is a lot of snow and uh, left turns. In fact, left turns can completely overwhelm Tatiana. I, I, I'm not going to make this corner. Why did you make me come here? I'm not going to make this corner. I'm telling you. Imagine if there was traffic. This is... Why did you make me come here? One of Tatiana's problems is that she often feels defeated before she even begins. 
Oh, no, she no. looks petrified. Yeah, she looks really scared. Lighten up. I can't go through this. Yes, you can. You don't have to. She looks so tense when she's driving. Tatiana is tense. If she screws this up, her mother-in-law will get soaking wet. You're a smooth lady. Tatiana takes her time and hits things slowly. Oh. Well, you won't win the, the, the fastest. You could walk this course faster than Tatiana's driving it. Okay. You took 12 minutes and 12 seconds, kind of long, you know? I know. One person asked if we were going to time you with a calendar or with the stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> you mentally freak yourself out. Oh, I gotta go on the highway. You know, you're you're mentally putting those roadblocks up in front of you. But the other thing is, I mean, to go back to, you need to look further ahead. And the further ahead you look, the less stress there is going to be. Everything is going to be so much more relaxing. And I can't drive that home enough. Up next is our aggressive road hog, Bob. I described my driving style as good, fast, get you there quick. Bob is 36 years old, and he still wants to rebel. Oh, this thing's a piece of crap. Look. <laughs> Come on, man. I'll pass you. Don't go. <laughs> Bob has the patience of a 13-year-old. Let's see you break this. You know what's scary too is he just doesn't even take oh, this wow. seriously yeah. at all. <laughs> Buddy, you shut the f up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. What's he doing? What he's doing is trashing the course for laughs. <laughs> I hope his insurance agent is watching this. <laughs> After a few early mistakes, Bob makes a mockery of the course rather than be held accountable for his own bad driving. The problem with this course is that it's not too tight. The problem with this course is that you have no patience. Yeah, good point. Could be it too, yeah. You're a good driver. You just choose to be an idiot for fun. Tomorrow's another day. Thank you, sir. You've been driving basically like a lunatic for most of your life. You haven't had a whole lot of you haven't had a whole lot of bad crashes. You know in your heart, you know that you have the physical skill to be a good driver. You have the athletic skills to be a good driver. You can choose to be a good driver when you want to. Madalena has no choice. She really is a bad driver. She gets in so many fender benders, she actually has her auto body shop's phone number on the speed dial of her cell phone. Is that smoke coming from my car? I do lack in attention when I'm driving. So I like to multitask. I usually paint my nails and talking on my phone when I'm driving. So maybe if I learn not to do those things, I'd be better. You ready? Do not make my makeup run. She's no! Matt, don't! Can you just drive really slow? I'm not joking. Do not <laughs> drive. No, Matt. No, oh, I'm, you're going I'm driving too so slow. No, drive slower. Oh, How can she focus with all that going on in the car? Do you mean to do that? Oh my God. No, I want my mom. I want my mom. I want my mom. Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> this makes Madalena look very bad as a driver, but that's not her main concern. Now we can't go out tonight without doing her hair. I know, this is going to take me forever. Now I can't go out tonight because her makeup is ruined. Just get me out of here. Just get me the f out of this car right now. When Madalena gets harassed by our road rager, she flips me? him the bird it's and stops I'm looking where she's going. Ignore, 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 ignore her. Ignore her. You gave her the finger. If you gave someone the finger, what would you do next? Drive away or get in that person's face? Go talk to her. Go talk to her. Put the brakes on. Go talk to her. Tell her our story. Is she getting out of the car? You getting out of the car? I can't go, can you stop honking? It's really rude. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Screamingly bad driving is part of Madalena's flashy fashion sense. Every scratch and dent is a colorful accessory that helps her get noticed. <laughs> you feel wet? Yeah. See, I guess I'm a little bit concerned with you because I feel that not driving well is part of your persona. 
and it's part of who you present yourself as the world. If you change that, will a big part of who you are be different? And is that why you might be resisting that a little um, bit? Um, I know, like I'm known as like mad, the bad driver, like you yeah. know what I mean. But do you no, want like, anything like that? Absolutely not. Up next is David. Oh, I'll let him sum up his ridiculous performance. <laughs> David drives by using a series of lunges. <laughs> his biggest issue, though, is his persistent side swiping. The sound of scraping metal is the sound you do not want to hear. Yes. That's your cue to stop when you hear. <laughs> stop! Yeah. Next up, Faith Ann. The smoother you drive, the drier you'll be. But she's not that smooth. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not that dry. More than anything else, it's an attitude issue. I got nothing to say. I'd say they're in for a soaker. Break out the towels. There's more drivers to come. Who do you think is Canada's worst driver? Here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, we are helping the eight worst drivers in Canada. We're treating them to intensive, hands-on training and a series of practical driving challenges. Every episode, someone will graduate until only one person remains. Canada's worst driver. So far, five students have gone through the handling test, but only Tatiana was able to step out of the vehicle dry. Now it's Heather's turn. Heather has slow reaction time, and she's far too cautious. Last episode, she crawled to this stop when her instructions had been to slam on the brakes. Today, her instructions are to drive smooth and stay dry. I'd say they're in for a soaking. It's good. She doesn't look around very much, though. She's like no. tunnel vision looking well, straight. Well, with that hood on, what the heck can she see? <laughs> It's indiscriminate banging. Heather hits things to her right, she hits things to her left, and then she rolls over all the rubble. Oh, she's she looking? Looking Where is she looking? Well, you go where you look, so she's looking at every object. Oh. Whoa, easy, whoa, easy. <laughs> Heather's husband, Ernie, is so distraught, he's plotting his revenge. Oh, hey, guess what? I don't get mad, I just get even. You did eight minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> there's low confidence, there's no confidence, and then there's Chris. I can count probably on one hand how many times I've driven in a car in the last uh, 12 years. I just feel way too anxious and stressed with, with driving a car. Many of our students believe they are good drivers. Oh my... <laughs> Not oh. Chris. This is impossible. What are you it's talking about? It's not impossible. With the precision of a chainsaw, Chris chews his way through. Not good. Not good. No. Son of a motherless goat. <laughs> no, back up. Hold oh, that way! That Our way. experts think Michelle is part of Chris's problem. Chris denies that. Both Michelle and I are, are impressed by the whole uh, setup in terms of what they're trying to get across. And uh, she's happy to be here. <laughs> She's happy to see me grow in terms of uh, my driving skill. Nobody can get by that. No one. No, what do you mean? No, you stupid. Oh. 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 oh language. Watching Chris destroy the back half of this course makes me think he's given up and is crashing into obstacles on purpose. I can't get the key out. Uh, 6.34 is not bad, though, but at the end, you were just fed up, eh? Just running over stuff. No, Let me out of here. I was trying. That's what's killing me. I was, I was trying, actually. I really... <laughs> Manuel is next. He's highly educated and quite proud of his intelligence. But last episode, he drove through a wall. Did he learn not to hit things? Let's see. Oh, be careful. Uh, I'm getting leaked on already. Oh, watch <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that pedestrian's oh, no. gone. Nope. <laughs> ah, that's not warm water. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Like David before him, Manuel grinds metal against metal and acts as if that's what he's supposed to do. I can't get out. What the heck is this? Oh, oh my God. I can't get out. I can't get out. The car. I can't get out. Come go, on. Okay, go as far straight as you can. You're going to make me angry if you tell me how to do yeah. it. No. Don't angry. tell me how to drive, God forbid. Before coming here, Manuel and Alex didn't know each other very well. Holy cow! Can there be any more water in here? <laughs> this is crazy. It's hard to know if this will help their friendship <laughs> or kill it. <laughs> he's just he's just annoyed now. You think that is easy? This is not easy. This is hard. Well, yeah, no, no. Alex Look wants to go back home to Calgary. But Manuel is nowhere near graduating. This is hard. I think we did well. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Do we not miss the car a lot? Well, I heard a lot of crash yeah. bang, so without looking at the car, I'm still going to say, yeah. You hit a lot of things in five minutes. I am not a good driver. I think everybody has their own challenges in driving. It's just a challenge of how do you become a better driver. This isn't rocket science. No. You can learn how to do this. Thank you, Manuel. Parallel parking strikes fear into the hearts of bad drivers everywhere. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to parallel park, which should be simple. After all, everyone had to parallel park to get their license. Okay, whenever you're ready. Representing the locals. In case our drivers are rusty, we're giving them pre-challenge parking lessons with instructor Heather Jones. You had a panic attack when I asked you to do a parallel park. How are you doing there? Not good. Oh my god. You okay, Manuel? I am. I'm all right. Take your little car from curb. Okay, keep coming in. Keep steering left. Keep steering left. Keep steering left. Can you see that? Okay, you just hit the car behind you. Yeah, my problem with parallel parking is that sometimes I find myself too far away from the curb. Yes, let me show you how to fix it, okay? When you pull out, pull out to 45 degrees again and stop. Now go to reverse. Take it back in. Don't steer. Just go straight back in. Now this one gets you closer, see? So if you ever have to fix it like that. Oh, so you beautiful. You like that? Okay. Yeah. Our students think this will be a simple challenge, but it's a little more slick than they realize. Our next challenge for Canada's worst drivers, parallel parking on an icy hill using our ungainly six meter long Volvo station wagon. Now to mimic a real life parking situation, we've given our participants two different spots to choose from. Now this very first spot right here is just a fraction too small to get this big beast of a car into. However, this further back spot will just accept this long boat of a vehicle. These horns and lights are hooked up to the bumpers and the curb. If you touch any of the obstacles, you're gonna know it. Now, to simulate the high pressure situation of a real Canadian squall, we've added a water cannon. Let's see if that doesn't ramp up the pressure a little. I can just barely make it into this spot. Can Canada's worst drivers do it? To watch all the action unfold, I've got a ringside seat. Our first participants in this challenge, Faith Ann and Joanne. I kind of feel like a spy. I'm wearing headphones so I can actually hear what they're saying in their own vehicle. Ready? Ready. I can't do it. Faith Ann overcomes her negativity and rattles the wagon into its spot by hitting the car in front of her four times. Manuel is going to take a while to get going. Okay, move it. I need to move it a little bit down. No, too much. Down further. No, too far. There, we're almost perfect. We are go there. 12 minutes of mirror adjustments later, we're finally ready to go. Can you let me the first try or no? Oh, yeah, I won't say anything to you the first try. Yeah, let me do, give me the first okay. try, please. You're starting a bit too far away. Yeah, no, no, oh, I know, sorry, I know. No, sorry, let me, sorry, let me okay, just, let yeah. me just position myself and do a perfect move. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Hey, Manuel. Let me, let's can do I it. help you now? Yeah, let me help okay. you now. Don't worry about the hose. Now go all the way the other way. 
Oh. 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 How about that, eh? Yeah, we nailed it. You made the parking Thank spot. You. And we said that we wanted to be at the top of the game today, and I think we are. Who will be the first to graduate? Manuel thinks it's either him or Faith Ann. Probably Faith Ann and I are in the same category of drivers in terms of improvement. <laughs> Something that is funny should make everybody around you laugh. Because I'm not laughing. I don't, this, this is in your sick mind. Reality is different. Next, Tatiana and Beth. Tatiana's not laughing now. She's terrified of the ice, convinced her tires won't be able to grip. She could make this. Forward, Tatiana. No, you touch the bumper, you're there, you're in. I did it! I did it! I did it! Anything that goes slow, I can do it. Oh, okay. Some people, though, can't do it. In fact, a few of our candidates are so bad. Oh, shit. The experts don't believe it. Are you trying? The Canadian Driver's Handbook plainly states that driving is a privilege. For our pitiful students, it's also a mystery. These people just cannot figure it out. At the end of this show, someone will get their keys back and graduate from the Driver Rehabilitation Centre, taking us one step closer to naming and shaming Canada's worst driver. And for that unfortunate soul, driving will not be a privilege. It'll be a stigma. We're challenging Canada's worst drivers to parallel park on an icy hill. They have two spots. One of them is too small, the other just right. Heather never parallel parks in her hometown of Medicine Hat. She says she'd sooner walk than park on the street. We're not going to let her off that easy. Heather and Ernie, not real chatterboxes. This is Heather's sixth attempt. You're in too far, that's why the horn's blowing. And it doesn't really feel like we're going to get out of here anytime soon. That's why you have bumpers. You bump the gas. Heather's parking the car like it's a battering ram. I know I'm not supposed to hit them. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Not Heather's finest hour. Here, we see a driver defeated and a husband scared stiff. <sighs> Up next is our road-raging speed freak, Bob. Last time Bob drove through a challenge, he literally drove through it. This time, he's being uncharacteristically responsible. Yeah, okay, we hit something. We hit the car in front. This sucks. Uh, he's frustrated. Got it. Yeah, they hit two things, but for Canada's worst drivers, that's pretty good. That sucks, man. Bob, you went through an arc here, man. You actually changed your ways to a certain level. Uh, water torture, you go through the course, beating on everything, bouncing over everything. And suddenly, you get to the parallel parking place, and you hit two bumpers, and you're appalled with yourself. Oh, because I do that in real life, though. I parallel park, so to hit two cars is, like, something that uh, bothered me. Something that bothers me is that Canada's worst drivers don't seem to know what basic road signs mean. It's a vehicular form of illiteracy. I'm going to show you signs. Quick answer, if you would, please. This one symbolizes left turn lanes. Okay, traffic will flow on both. Uh, turn right on left if... I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. This means keep to the right. Um, there's going to... You're... There's a steep... Uh, not, there's a turn coming, like... Uh... That you cannot um, 
go on the other side of the road but and not make you turn no pedestrians no walking no walking mm -hmm. no passing uh, um. no passing bob got them all right heather didn't The reason we admitted Bob into the rehab center is because he likes to scare people while speeding on the highway. Wanna play bumper tag? Catch this. <laughs> when our experts got a hold of him, they challenged Bob to prove that he is not a menace. But it was like banging your head against a wall. Bob loves mayhem, and he always wants to show off. Skill-wise, Bob is the best driver here, but his deviance could make him the worst. It's time to address his most dangerous habit. So, you're going to play bumper tag on the highway when you leave here? I don't know, it's just when I drive, people piss me off. It's like, if you cut me off and you're being a knob, and I can get around you, then I'm going to scare the shit out of you for me off. In general, when someone cuts you off, it's because he's a bad driver. It's not because they're trying to hurt you. When you're doing that to these people, uh, that just puts the pressure on and they become yet worse drivers again. Yeah, I'm seeing that now that it's being explained. I understand that. After watching the way these people drive and how bad they are, I, I'm coming to realize that. That's what I'm saying. All right, that's great. Then. It's like clearing the fog. Like, you know, it just makes a lot more sense now, you know? Yeah. Up until now, Bob thought everyone on the road was out to get him. Yeah. So he always tried to get them first. Hopefully, we're changing that trait. There are a lot of bad traits to change. Oh! We're not seeing a great deal of improvement in your skill level. Who is Canada's worst driver? <laughs> Canada's worst drivers have proven they're in the dark on a lot of issues. Tonight, they're in the dark in a car. It's not that hard. I'll show you. Okay, this is the Nighttime Skills Challenge. Many Canadians who have been in nighttime driving accidents claim the moose appeared from nowhere. That, of course, is never true. Moose just stand there. Cars appear from nowhere. There's one now, flashing his high beams. If our drivers let that distract them, they'll run down this pedestrian. Next, a moose appears from nowhere. Shoe moose, go on. Honk your horn and the moose will move. Now things get cruel. Sometimes at night, roads and alleys aren't as they appear. So through no fault of their own, our drivers will be funneled into this dead end, which they'll have to back out of. If frustration kicks into high gear here, we could be stuck in this narrow space all night. Using common sense though, drivers should be out in one minute. Heading to the finish line, hoping that nothing else pops out of me. And there I am done. And that's nighttime driving skills. First up is Madalena. Her friend Jennifer is very impressed. Good. Hey, look at this. Look at these skills, these maneuvering skills. Oh, yeah, man. You've learned so much. Oh, but Madalena is not impressive. Two points lost. Oh, a low haystack. As usual, Mad hits everything in her way. Oh, God. And barely oh, slows are you down. Okay, I can see, I can see, I can see, I got it. Ken, obviously we're gonna have to kill the car. I'm okay, let's just kill it. Beeping the horn would have been obvious to most, but these two party girls have a different way of dealing with the world. Okay, let's do this. In the dead end, Madalena gets confused, then defeated. We're never gonna get out of here. Yeah, and thanks for the help. Okay, you want me to help Damn you? It. Back up. <laughs> yeah, Usually when she gets stuck, Madalena sweet talks someone into helping her. Tonight, she only has Jennifer. Can you drive? No, forward! <laughs> We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Yeah, boy. Finito. Okay, stop. Stop. Get out of the car. Let's go home. 
what you have to do, you have to raise your standards of what normalcy is. You just have to say no. Scraping five different parts of the car on a 30 kilometer ride, that's not normal. When it comes to being a bad driver, Faith Ann is a thoroughbred. Accidents are in her bloodline. My grandfather was pretty bad, and then he taught my dad, who's really bad, and then he taught my brother, who's very bad, and then they taught me. And of course, I'm really bad too. One of the reasons Faith Ann is really bad is that she doesn't use her mirrors properly. Hopefully on this challenge, she'll put them to good use. Oh, didn't need that. <laughs> Use that mirror. Need that mirror. <laughs> the bad start gets worse. Road rage. Road rage. I'll take them down too. Like everybody Showing else. no regret, no remorse, or even frustration for that matter, Faith Ann just keeps on keeping on. Oh, look at that. Finally is going away. Nearing the end, Faith Ann stops hitting things. She's in and out of the maze without incident and headed for home. She's even feeling bad about the pedestrians she squashed. We think somewhere buried deep inside that thing that you present to the world and all those crashes that are littering the Niagara frontier, you can get better, but you've got to take responsibility for what you do and recognize that you're in a social environment when you're on the road. So that's our message to you. I think I come from a family of unlucky drivers because in the past couple of months, uh, a lot of my family members have gone into car accidents. And um, it, worry, it worries me because um, uh, I become more paranoid as I drive along and become too careful. David needs serious help behind the wheel. Last week he demonstrated bad reaction time and a complete lack of common sense. Tonight, there's no driving instructor beside him. Oh. Just his buddy George with a running commentary. Oh, there goes your mirror. <laughs> That's one mirror for Faith Ann, one for David, and none left for the drivers still to come. Stuck in the dead end, oh. David could use that mirror. <laughs> this car is... Ooh. Oh, when David hears metal scraping on metal, he still just keeps on driving. Oh, I'm sorry, David. I mean to laugh, man. Oh, no, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> sorry. Oh, back up, back up, turn, turn. Oh, what did you just break? Oh, watch out, the person, person, person. Oh. <laughs> My children are on the streets with these people. <laughs> Holy, this this car is gone. 14 minutes and thousands of dollars worth of body work later, yeah, David emerges morning. from the dead end, humbled and confused. It was really a frustrating challenge. It was. You know, you know, like, that was ugly. I just have to repeat my mantra to you, which I know I'm going to uh, say time and again to you. When you hear the sound of scraping metal on metal, yes. stop your car. David, I mean, yeah. how... You're not taking responsibility. You beat up the parked car, parallel park thing. You beat up the nighttime driving thing pretty bad. Of course, everybody beat up the water torture test. Yeah. So at this point, we're seeing glimmers of hope in terms of your attitude. We're not seeing a great deal of improvement in your skill level. When our last student makes it through the nighttime challenge, it's going to be judgment day. It's time for the most improved motorist here to graduate. Three of Canada's worst drivers have already gone through our nighttime navigation course. Next up is lead-footed speed junkie Bob. You know there's definitely coming stuff coming out, so just yeah, you know, keep it cool. Really it's really icy out there too, so definitely. See, right now. See, I knew it. We saw ya. Bob's driving style has become patient and sensible. It's in the middle of the road. Get out of my way. <laughs> Happy. happy. No, I just didn't hit. Yeah, like I didn't know I was going this way. Where other students were overwhelmed, Bob is bored. He's driving safely, cautiously, and at a sensible speed. Yeah, I think you probably did the best there. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Bob, what happened to you? No crunching metal, no road rage. Oh, yeah, okay, Smooth as silk. But we're proud of you, man. We love you. Okay. We want you to do well. Next up is Tatjana. 
The sun rises in eight hours. Let's hope that gives her enough time. Even at a snail's pace, Tatiana still manages to hit things. He really? Oh! Oh! <laughs> No, no, it's oh, just grass. That was a car. Yeah. And this is the dead end. Tatiana believes she can get her car turned around. She can't. After 14 minutes, she finally backs her way out. Okay. I thought they'd throw something else at you. Well, it certainly wouldn't be a speeding ticket. I think, Tatiana, these few times, the water uh, example, the nighttime driving, were really good examples. You did not do that badly. And I think you should take it, you know, you should get some reinforcement for that and recognize that for you, maybe a lot of this is about confidence. You go, girl. Thank you, darling. Someone else with no confidence is Chris. However, Chris shouldn't have confidence because he has zero skill. <laughs> nice and smooth. Yeah. Well, that just blinded the looking crap out of me. He doesn't even know how to flash his high beams back at the driver who just blinded him. I can't see. So now what? Okay, so I see Buddy. I stop. For some reason, Chris has gone to the very end of the dead end. Oh, f now he's stuck. That was not... Chris tries to get out on his own, but it doesn't work. He tries following Michelle's advice. That doesn't work. After 47 minutes of going nowhere fast, he finally gives up. I can't get this thing out of here. You can't get this thing out of here? I'm what no should way. we do? Well, why don't you let him try to talk you through it if I'm, I'm clearly not su successful? Uh, why don't you try somebody else? See if that will work. And with that, I hop into the shotgun seat. It isn't pretty. Chris struggles to follow my instructions. Sometimes I have to give the instructions twice because he simply doesn't understand. <sighs> it's quite exasperating, actually. Just before we're about to starve to death, Chris sees the light and gets out. All right. Home free. Congratulations. Oh, you're in reverse. There you go. Now he's finally moving forward again. Huh? Good man. You didn't give up. Which is half the battle. Right underneath. You're done. Finish. The finish. You're done. Yep. Park it right here and you're good. <sighs> he got out! got out of the dead end eventually <laughs> <laughs> i tell you you showed heart man you showed patience you showed uh, that you wanted to get out of there like a lot of people would have walked away from that situation yeah, i was embarrassed i was frustrated i was really trying hard not to get real angry i mean i could have i could have you telling yourself like i'm incompetent i'm not good at this um more more a sense of disbelief that I, that i couldn't figure my way out now it gets really scary. Our panel of experts must decide which student will have the honor of being the first to graduate from our driver rehabilitation center. There can be only one. Well, it might be a shocking concept, but somebody is about to graduate from the driver's rehabilitation center. And I'm wondering, is there anybody in this facility that we feel confident enough to give their keys back to. Uzma, who would you be comfortable with giving... Who would, would you be comfortable letting somebody like Bob Code or somebody like Faith Ann back on the road? They, these people can drive. They just have a lot of accidents because they choose to. Absolutely. And I think that what we have to recognize is that we have to pick our battles here. We have to see what we can really do. And I think with the people with whom it's not a skill-based issue, but it's an attitude issue, we can only go so far. Manuel is trying hardest. He's putting in 110%. He needs to have some instruction. He needs to have some skill level. He's smart. He's extremely intelligent. But you don't know what you don't know. Uh, Madalena, it's a game. Uh, Tatiana has fear. Tatiana's not bad. She's not bad. Tatiana can drive. She, as we discussed, needs to understand how to use her eyes more effectively. 
and Chris also has, has some issues that he has to do, deal with psychological to get to a comfort zone. Once he gets to a comfort zone, then he can start learning. Well, Chris has bigger issues than psychological. A man doesn't know how to drive. We got a lot of people that are really bad drivers. Yeah. He doesn't know how to drive. He's actually in a different position than he other is. drivers. He is. Yeah, I, I believe he is. I think so that Chris is the kind of person for whom it's a skill-based issue more. And confidence. Yes. The confidence is definitely needed, but he shouldn't have confidence at this point because he doesn't have the skill. Uzma, has, has Bob Code learned enough that we can actually say that he's made an improvement? He's a skilled driver. Absolutely. He has the skill. During I the night drive, he, was, yeah. you know, he did really well. I think he Which did realize that the kind of driver that drives him crazy is him. him. I think he, the penny did actually drop on that level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's time. we got to put our heads together and figure this out. Here's the criteria for graduating. The most improved driver gets to go home. Not necessarily the best driver, the driver who's corrected their most glaring problems. We've reached the end of our second show, which means it's time for the most improved motorist here to graduate and leave the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Who will it be? Has anyone really improved enough that they should be allowed to be released back into the flow of life's normal traffic? Well, David, it certainly won't be you. If I hear metal scraping on metal, I will stop my car. If I hear metal scraping on metal, I will stop my car. Chris. You've shown us that you can get into some pretty sticky situations, but you cannot get out of the driver rehabilitation center until you can back your own way out of your own jam. And I'm sure you'll figure that out. Faith Ann, you like to pretend like you don't care, but the very fact that you're here makes us believe that you do care. You can drive as straight as a whip, but your mood can turn on a dime. You really need to put the brakes on your anger. Which brings us to our most improved driver. Deciding who will be our first graduate hasn't been easy. All of our students have particular personal driving dilemmas and need solutions that are tailor-made to their own problems. Some of them have shown fantastic improvement, but for sheer, unrivaled, unparalleled personal growth, there can be only one. Bob. Bob, when you got here, you were an unmitigated disaster, a threat to everyone and everything in your way. But now, I and our experts do honestly believe that you're on the path to enlightenment. So, Bob, I'm giving you back your keys, complete with the pepper spray. See you later, Bob. Take care, man. Who could possibly have predicted that our most aggressive driver would be the first to go home? When Bob got here, he was actually proud of being a menace on the highway. During the first few challenges, he laid waste to all obstacles and laughed the whole time. It looked as though he would never graduate. But when he got to the parallel parking test, he suddenly started listening to reason. It's like clearing the fog. Like, you know, it just makes a lot more sense now, you know. And in the nighttime challenge, he seemed rehabilitated. No crunching metal, no road rage. Oh, yeah, Smooth as silk. Bob Code the first graduate from our Driver Rehabilitation Center. Seven students remain. Who will get their keys back next episode? And who will be left behind, stuck in the running to be named Canada's worst driver? We're not as good as I thought it was. We don't need to kind of settle down. Also, that you know, the guys cut me off aren't necessarily idiots. They can just be bad drivers, so we're not. We had a good time. Everybody had a blast. They're great people, so don't give up on them. Have fun with these people. I had fun with them. They're great. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver, crashing continues. Oh, look what I did. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> that really sucked.